it's probably been almost a year since I've had the chainsaw mill out. Uh, last April was the last time I had this, this mill out. And uh, after that, I decided to build a bandsaw mill. <laughs> so, <laughs> so today I'm here with Donovan. If you don't remember Donovan, he was uh, in the load testing video. He gave me the, well, he didn't give them to me. He brought them by. You can see them all stacked behind us, but all you of cut the, them for me. I cut them for him. All of the material for the load test that we did on the bandsaw mill. That was all the upper canopy of this tree. It was essentially a big clump kind of tree. It had all these really straight uh, limbs or upper canopy sections coming off the top of it. So that made a lot of lumber. Like, what just like over a thousand board feet of other stuff besides no, this? The, 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 the branch is worth a thousand board feet. <laughs> Donovan contacted me back in June and he was like, hey, I got this log, you want to cut it up sometime? And uh, it's March, the next year now. <laughs> so I got the Steel 090 out, we made the first cut already, and we're about to take off the ladder in the first chunk here. Now unfortunately when they were removing the tree, they had started to cut this log up in half to try and get it out of here. So there's this uh, partial saw cut in the middle here we're trying to avoid. I think what we're gonna do with these off cuts is take them back to my place and cut them on the bandsaw and get a few, actually look at them now, they're gonna be fairly significantly large. I think it might just give it the old shove and then we'll cut it in half or something, I don't know. Oh! <laughs> I think you got some more uh, weight behind you than I do. Okay, you ready? So I posted a video about a year ago about the first time using this saw with the chainsaw mill and since then I haven't actually used it. And in the video we talked about a few different things that could be affecting the performance of the saw at that time. And one of the things was that the saw wasn't really all that tuned up yet and I still haven't gotten around to actually taking it apart and cleaning it and like going through it all and making sure it's all good on the inside. Um, but the Kind of the biggest thing that I saw is the issue with that chainsaw milling setup was the bar and chain that were on there. The chain was a half inch pitch um, skip tooth chain and with the low RPMs of the saw it didn't really cut that fast. So the only change that I've made since last year was putting this bigger bar and an actual milling chain on there. The chain on there is a ripping chain, it's a full comp chain and this chain right now is brand new. Now normally when I get these chains brand new I like to take the rakers down a little bit but when I get them new, I like to run them at least once so that way when I'm sharpening them for the first time, I can lower the rakers as well. So this cut might not be as fast as it could be just based off of the chain itself. But that bar and chain combination brings my kerf down from 5 16ths to a quarter of an inch, which helps with the performance of the saw and you know, requiring less power to pull that chain through the cut. So the bar on there right now is 66 inches and when it's mounted into the mill, that gives me a cut width around 56 inches or so and that is just barely enough for us to get through this crotch section here of this log. Now one of the things I had mentioned in the video last time was that this chainsaw has a governor. So if the saw revs too fast, the governor kicks in, chokes the engine, and then the RPMs drop. So again, that's something else I haven't really adjusted. But in this case with this log, it's actually pretty easy to keep the RPMs at the right speed. So there's a bit of a balance here, feeding the saw into the cut at the right speed so that it has enough load on the saw to keep the RPMs down, but not enough load that it starts to bog down the saw. So as we get going through the cut, we can kind of find that perfect sweet spot of just the right amount of pressure to apply as we're feeding through the cut. And this is set up at a decline, so there isn't really a whole lot of work here. We're just really just guiding the saw through the cut and just kind of standing there thinking about whatever. <laughs> a lot of great introspection time.
Well, it's light on mine. <laughs> So a month has gone by and after cutting, what would I make, two or three cuts at Donovan's place, um, that was pretty much the entire day that we were able to get through just those few cuts. But luckily that was enough to lighten this log enough that it was able to be picked up with a bobcat and brought out of the backyard. Donovan had, he had been um, planning on redoing his backyard, so he was planning on regrading the whole thing. So he was gonna have a bobcat in for that anyway. He managed to sneak this log past the air between his deck and his shop, which I think is exactly four feet. With the bobcat, he got it out to the driveway and then we were able to just throw it on the trailer and bring it back here. Because if you've ever done chainsaw milling, and especially a log this big, this is a big job to do with a chainsaw mill. And since I have the bandsaw mill that can cut this a lot faster and with a lot less problems, potential problems, this hauling it back here is definitely the way to go. So one of the things about running a chainsaw mill that wide that I totally forgot on this last cut here was to make sure the bar is nice and flat. So when I had the chainsaw mill set up the first time, I had the bar nice and level and parallel to the guide. And when we took it apart to put a new chain on after the chain was dull after the first two cuts, I totally forgot to level that bar again. So the last cut that we did ended up extremely wavy and it was extremely hard, extremely slow to make that cut. Didn't really think about it until afterwards. I realized, hey, the bar's got a sag in it. I totally forgot to take that sag out. And instead of a 16 minute cut, that cut was like 40 minutes or something ridiculous. So, lesson learned there. <laughs> but I already have a big log on the mill right now, which is going to be cut next. So I'm gonna drop this stuff onto the ground here so I can use my trailer to move the slabs that are, being, that are being cut off this log that's on the mill right now. Now, ideally, I think I've talked about this in the past, in the future, I don't have logs here waiting to go on the mill. The logs will never be on the ground, is my idea. So I can bring the logs in on the trailer that go directly onto the bed of the mill. I never have to take them off the trailer and put them back on to get them on the mill again because they're just gonna go straight onto the mill and I don't have to worry about moving stuff around as much. So I'll get these things dropped onto the ground out of the way, and then in a few days, I'll get these things up onto the mill and we'll get them cut. It's gonna be that goofy slab, huh? Yeah, it is.
Isn't that awesome? Look at that. This is a beautiful log. Yeah. If I get more out of this than I thought. You gotta have all the tables you're gonna need for the rest of your life. And that is awesome. So right through here we're at 28 inches, 72 centimeters. It's pretty consistent all the way down. Yeah, that actually make make a nice little like co uh, oversized coffee table. Did you get thicker on that one? I did, I did the math. No, two and three-eighths. It just looks that way because that curvature there. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say. So is this the Second blade, or did you go, have you gone past that? This is my sixth blade. Oh, sixth blade? Yeah. Okay. I'm using one per one big per log. Two. Yeah, one per one. Except this one, which I ran through that entire ash log, and now I'm doing this one, and it seems to be cutting just fine still. Yeah, because it debarked. I'm sure it has a lot to do with it. Yeah. All the other stuff's all solid bark and bark. Go, you got it. Yeah. You know, this other slabs is pretty cool with all the crotch figure, but I'm kind of liking this bark yeah. inclusion thing. Look at that. These keep getting better. Oh, I broke <laughs> it. I broke it. There it is, right there. Bye bye, broom. Big hair follicle. Everybody's got character after this. Can't express how overjoyed I am and how fast this is. It'll dry more by the time we take it off the trailer, right? <laughs> it drops some water weight. <laughs> right. Or not. Not bad. All right, so we flipped it over so we can saw this twist out of this from our fantastically skilled chainsaw milling failure. Do you know how long this cuts are taking offhand? No? I don't know either. It feels pretty quick. Maybe three minutes? Maybe? I think it's faster than that. I think we're like a minute and a half, two minutes.
Wow. Not bad, huh? No. Not too shabby. Veneer, anyone? I'll get that half. <laughs> I'll get the big one. Go for it. 41 inches. That's a uh, like tabletop right there, huh? Yeah. 38. Man, you're getting a lot of tables to make. What are you going to do with your life? It's making tables. Make, make them go away. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> I need to get rid of these things. <laughs> yeah, I don't care where they are. They, go. they, they follow me home. <laughs> they got to go. <laughs> Oh yeah. There's a coffee table. There's, there's a six, few. There's six of them. Six coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you like coffee. That is cool. Wow. So this is almost the end of the adventure. This for is now. for now. You're almost done. Donovan ran out of some stickers, so he's gonna make some more stickers and get the rest of the stacked. And you're gonna throw a tent over here yep. and just forget about it for a for while. A couple of years. Set it and forget <laughs> it. <laughs> you just stay there and hide in my backyard. Well, we got. Oh, you got. Well, like you said, almost 2,000 board feet. You think? Yeah, here. A little under 2,000 board feet, roughly. You know. I didn't get real close measurements, but close enough. So. Yeah, so th this has been a fun adventure. We have all the smaller stuff that we did with the load testing with the sawmill. That was fun. It's been yep. a really fun adventure. The chainsaw mill, comparing that to doing this all on a bandsaw. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the chainsaw mill was good for like the first two cuts. And then after that. And you're like, this is not, nope. <laughs> but those first two cuts were a lot of fun. So yeah. I think the chainsaw mill will come out like once a year. I think is that's enough. It's probably gonna be good. <laughs> so if you want to see more about this tree's adventure, how it came down, um, some of the other milling of the small stuff, check out Donovan's channel. He has some videos over there about this whole adventure of his, and he'll probably tell you if this is actually worth it. Worth it. At the end of the day, in two years, I'll tell you. Come pick up the slabs, get them out of my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of them. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this one. I certainly did. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on this stuff, feel free to leave me a comment. Maybe Dobbin will answer them. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> and until next time, happy woodworking. See you, everybody.